to right. the duties. Go. Okay, it's six o'clock. Good evening, everyone. I'm, I would like to welcome you to the um, Human Relations Special Meeting for the month of November. Um, we have to reschedule because of Veterans Day. So we're grateful that everybody's able to make it. Um, I would like first for I would like first for staff to do roll call. Sure. Yep. Oh, Vice Chair Everly. Sorry. Here. Commissioner Krause. Here. Commissioner Regeer. Absent. Commissioner Savage. Here. Chair Smith. Here. Councilmember Stone. Here. Thank you. All right. Are there any agenda requests or changes? Okay. We now have oral communications. If something is not on the agenda, this is the time for the public to speak. We will give each person two minutes and 30 seconds. We'll wait for staff to bring up time and then they can call it. Hold on, it always takes me a minute to, to get set up. So chair, we have two hands. The first hand is Aram James. Aram, you have two and a half minutes. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I want you to think back to a meeting earlier this year when we had James Reif Schneider, Captain. Well, now we have zero black officers. Nobody would answer that question for me. I had to keep probing and probing and, and finally uh, it broke open. So we know we have zero black officers, but we're gonna work to change that. I know that's gonna be a priority. Uh, the Malcolm X case, we know that Cyrus Vance, the Manhattan district attorney today, 56 years after uh, two African-American gentlemen were wrongfully prosecuted, uh, for the Malcolm X assassination and two other gentlemen apparently got away with murder because because of the wrongful conviction, nobody looked for the, the real suspects. Cyrus Vance said the reason it's being dismissed is because the despicable FBI and the despicable New York Police Department withheld, guess what? Exonerating evidence that would have shown that these individuals were innocent. Is that just a one off? No, it happens in the United States every day, maybe not every day, but on, with, on a regular basis. Our police culture in this country is despicable. Our FBI culture in this country is despicable, but we can do something about that. You all on the Human Relations Commission have to stop biting your tongues and refusing to ask hard questions of our police department. As long as that happens, your silence is complicity. Just as much as those folks that were compl complicit and silent and had to face the Nuremberg trials in the Holocaust and in other many other ugly events in slavery, et cetera, et cetera. Many people parallel our prison industrial complex uh, to a vestige of slavery to Jim Crow we can no longer be silent. Uh, we've got to work. We've got to, ref we've got to start uh, getting out of denial that we have a cultural problem in law enforcement in this country and in Palo Alto. You know the, the, the dilemma. No black police officers and four or five white officers suing because of the Black Lives uh, mural mantle. Man Thank you so mural. much, Mr. James. Excuse Thank me? You. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. You're muted, Minka. I am muted. The next speaker is Mark Peterson Perez. Um, go ahead, please. You have two and a half minutes. Okay, that's great. You know, um, thank you uh, for allowing me to participate. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if you can see me or not. But having said that, uh, I would like to offer a plug for my son. Um, He's one of the founding employees of Zoom. And uh, he beat me by several years as far as retirement is concerned. Uh, he retired at 45 at a, as a bazillionaire. Uh, 
a little bit about him as well. Um, he had, at age 10, he had a full ride scholarship. Now, I'm not going to tell you the university, but, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm really proud of that young man, but I'm also proud of my other son, who is a systems engineer uh, in the HVAC area. So what he does is he just sits at home and works at a computer. I mean, that's, uh, he, he really, I, I wouldn't say it's a, it's not working with tools, you know, HVAC tools, but uh, being a systems engineer, I'm sure he has all kinds of computers around the house. Uh, I, I would like to mention this about Zoom. Zoom had the uh, ability to be one of the premier companies to partnership with Zoom, that is to say the city of Palo Alto, but they chose not to. And uh, the person that rejected uh, my son's proposal, which would have been a number one proposal, was I guess the a police guy, I guess his name is Charles Cullens. Uh, he uh, just didn't want to have anything to do with my son because of his association with me. And, you know, my association with the Palo Alto police has not been the best of relationships. And I apologize for that. I'd also like to mention the fact that, you know, that Mr. James, uh, Aaron James, had, had been receiving all of the credit with respect to the uh, untimely departure of former Palo Alto Police Chief Lynn Johnson. He was not responsible. I was responsible. The, the problem here is, is that when it was reported upon in the news, they got my name spelled wrong. So if you, if you go in there, Mark Peterson with an E and then Perez E, but if you go in with an O, then you'll discover all Mr. of this information. Mr. Perez. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Has everybody reviewed their minutes? Are there any corrections to the minutes? Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. Thank you, Vice Chair. Can I have a second? I second. Okay, we will do the vote from the top of the um, alphabet. Vice Chair Eberly? Commissioner uh, Kraus? Aye. Commissioner Savage? Aye. Um, Chair Smith? Aye. We have a unanimous vote on the minutes. All right. Um, um, Minka, yes. would you please explain uh, sure. item number one? Because I think it's We'll talk about this a little bit yes. more later, but I think it's critical for you to explain. Right. So we have before you, you have um, seen um, this resolution. It was attached to your um, um, agenda. So as you know, way back at the beginning of COVID, um, the governor signed um, you know, a law into place that allowed some restrictions um, eased on the Brown Act that allowed um, commissions and councils to meet remotely. So there has been some, some changes to that. And um, the current um, order from the governor is that commissions can continue to meet remotely if there is still a state and a, um, an area state of emergency, but that the commission uh, or body needs to make an, uh, an agreement every 30 days that they still are in agreement to meet remotely. So for you to continue this meeting, we need to pass this resolution. If you do not pass it, the meeting will be immediately over. So the HRC can continue to meet remotely through January, 2022. The council is already in a hybrid fashion. And if you haven't watched the meeting, I was a little skeptical. It is so completely, seamless i'm not sure if council member stone but watching from from home how just you know i usually watch on youtube but seeing people in person comment in person or everything our it job our it staff have done a great job so we are waiting still for some direction from council as far as um commissions going back um in person i you know we're looking early next year 
but we, the HRC needs to pass this resolution every 30 days if it wants to do so remotely. At this time, it's just gonna be, I think for the December, November and December meetings. And there's some conversation if a December meeting is happening and that's your last agenda item. But for you to meet this meeting, you will need to pass this resolution in order um, to do so. I will say that as staff, I will continue to keep abreast of what's happening in regards to um, any council direction for the, the, uh, the commissions for January. So um, even though this state law says we can continue to do so through January, the council might want um, to have commissions if they want to come back earlier. We can talk about what that looks like in the last agenda item. This one is just solely for passing it that gives um, this body permission to meet remotely for tonight's meeting only. Thank you, staff. Pub we have public comment. Let me check. Yes, there is one name. Okay, but well, we'll take it. Okay, I'll wait till Mary puts up the clock. Okay, Aram, you have two and a half minutes. Go ahead, please. Okay, I won't need that tonight on this item, but I just wanted to say, Minka, that was a very uh, clarifying um, talk that you gave. So I understand it's just for this evening, but I would indicate there are some people that have would have difficulty making this meeting. I know that uh, Mr. Peterson Perez, who just spoke, uh, lives in uh, Nicaragua. So I don't think he would have been able to be at this meeting except for Zoom, which of course his son did participate in, in creating. Um, I would also say that there are a lot of seniors and maybe not just seniors that have a hard time making it uh, to the actual meetings. So I would encourage you all down the line to support having uh, Zoom as an alternative, whether it's city council meetings, commission meetings, or the HRC meeting. Thank you much. Thank you. All right. Um, commissioners, any questions? Okay, can I get a motion to um, adopt this resolution? Yes. Okay, yeah. we have we have one per, I need a second. I second. Okay. We will do the vote from the top of the alphabet. Alphabet, Vice Chair Everly. Aye. Um, Commissioner Krause. Aye. Commissioner Savage. Aye. But Chair Smith, aye. We have aye. a unanimous. Aye. We have a unanimous, um, unanimous vote. Thank you much. Um, the next item is. Um, Staff, is there any way to put the FBI presentation on screen? Yes, I believe Mary can do so. Okay. Just, just give her a minute. You want me to sing the Jeopardy song? No, we're good. Okay. Sorry, I have it minimized, but it's for some reason it's not showing up in my. I can try to do so from the agenda, Mary, if you're having problems. All right, I will start talking about it and then we can catch up. Okay, I will, I will, um, I will try to do so as well. All right. Um, a a couple of weeks back, we had the opportunity. There we go. Well, we were invited along with um, several um, luminaries or police officers, city council members, county officials, sheriff officials, um, civil rights agencies by um, Representative Anna Eshu from the 18th con Congressional District to hear from the San Francisco Division of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, specifically surrounding hate crimes. We found, next slide, we found this to be extremely, extremely um, informative. So we wanted to do a brief overview 
of the presentation, go over the threat guide and talk about possibly having them um, and, probably, and possibly having them to come speak to us as we evolve into this. As we can see in the in the area that is covered by the San Francisco division, so that's you know basically the Bay Area up from Santa Cruz heading back up towards um, a little bit south of Sacramento. We have a hundred in 2015. We had 163 hate crimes. As 2020, we are 349. And this year looks like it will be significant. It will actually be another year of increase. Next slide, please. As we can see, um, and we slide over because actually the next slide might be a little better, Minto. Yes, sir. As we can see, um, religious, race, ethnicity, um, religious, sexual orientation, disability, gender, and gender identity are flat down, maybe a little bit up. The significant, significant raise in an issue is in race and ethnicity. That is why you'll see, for example, um, in 2020, it was 255 versus 152 in, um, in 2019. Next slide. As you can see, um, Santa Clara County, has the highest in our region. Um, and you can see the change. So for example, San Francisco had 65 reported hate crimes in, um, in 2019, 55 in 2020. Santa Clara had 51 in 2019. Um, Santa Clara now has 121. Um, so as you can see, we we take up the lion's share of it. All right, next slide. So the FBI wants to partner with people. Hold on one second. Good. So can we go next slide? Um, increase FBI investigative capacity, improve law enforcement coordination, increase community outreach and launch of public awareness campaign. Next slide. Um, they're gonna surge resources around hate crimes, more special training, um, improve law enforcement. They wanna offer assistance and training to local state and tribal law enforcement, encourage law enforcement partners to refer possible federal hate crime cases to FBI. Um, and this is interesting. In many instances, federal investigations may run parallel to and in coordination with the local law enforcement investigation of violations of California state hate crime laws. When somebody is being prosecuted for a hate crime in the state, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be federal charges on the same crime. All right. Um, the FBI, one, one step back. The FBI also has. Um, deeper resources such as forensic expertise, experience and identification and proof of hate-based motivation often provide an invaluable complement to local law enforcement. Many cases are persecuted on the state statutes as murder, arson, or more recent local ethnic intimidation laws. Next slide. Incre increased community outreach. Um, they've reached out to the NAACP, several other groups. Um, and they're launching a public awareness campaign, expanding public education outreach, encourage more report of bias, hate, social media awareness, and public report information to tips in any language. Next slide. Um, these are just the crime statutes. Um, next slide. Okay, we could we can turn off the presentation because the rest of it is. Uh... So, a few. <laughs> The other thing that was shared with us was the um, actual matrix that shows the different kind of hate and threat. Um, staff, if we have that. Is that the second attachment? Yes, that's the okay. one with the blue. I have order. that link if you want me to share it. Okay, go ahead, Mary. I, I, I was just very happy with this. It really goes through what people need to 
do when they receive a threat, how they can deal with it, what they're looking for. I think this is an extremely invaluable document. I think this is the kind of thing that needs to be shared with churches and synagogues and, and public spaces and restaurant owners so that people know what to do and there is some level of training. And also, if you slide down, Minka. No, I'm sorry, Mary, one slide. And there's only one page. They will also give you all the numbers to the FBI field offices so that you can actually call where you are and report and report to them and say, this is the issue and they gave you. So I think this threat guide needs to um, be shared as widely as possible. The other thing um, I found really helpful was hearing the actual FBI folks talk about the hate crimes, the trends, things they're seeing in the field. I would love to bring them in. They, they want to talk to HRCs. They want to talk to, and they want to be in the local space to do some training and also give some informative stuff. I anticipated when I went on this call for it to be very repetitive to what we've heard from local PD and DA, but it was, it was way more informative than I anticipated and added an entirely new dimension. Um, I'll ask Commissioner Krause, this is not planned, but since she was on the call, if there's anything you felt I missed in this description, um, Commissioner Kraus, can you um, bring it forward? Would you like me to stop yes, you sharing? Yes, you could take it off, Mary. Thank you. Ah, I'm off mute. Um, I was on the call with you, Chair, and I found it, again, incredibly informative, tactical, wanting to come into communities, um, and frankly, this is what I've been looking for, for us to be able to interact with our communities much more extensively. For example, and I told Mary about this and Commissioner Savage, uh, a young man from the other community and board that I'm on from the Stanford Jewish organization called the Hillel, um, did not experience discrimination wearing ceremonial uh, garments, uh, a hat, a yarmulke is what it's called on the Stanford campus. And the ED was very pleased and she's also a rabbi. She came, he came to Palo Alto and he was the focus of verbal abuse down University Avenue. And she wanted, the rabbi came to me and said, what can I tell the HRC? What can I do? And this is the beginning of a mechanism that we can use for the HRC to reach out and to be a a point of reaching to, so we can find ways to help people feel more comfortable. Now, this young freshman denied wanting to do a police report because he's 18 years old and he's just been spit at and yelled at on University Avenue. He's been shamed. He's not going to tell the police. But if we have a mechanism where we can report these events, it can be extraordinarily valuable. And I turn to you, Chair, for your ideas on how we can move this forward. I'm going to do public comment and then um, I'll circle, I'll bring this to a um, group discussion. Um, because I think there's a one or two ways, and I'd really love to hear you guys take on it. Um, staff, can we do public comment? We have 2.30 on the clock. The first speaker is Aram James. Go ahead. You have two and a half minutes. So I've got a menorah here at home, uh, and I've got the picture of my dad on the wall at his uh, bar mitzvah in, in Minnesota in about 19. 39, but I don't have a yarmulke. My idea would be we'd have a multiracial group and we'd all walk down University Avenues with yarmulkes. And I'm, uh, I'm sure that there's a local synagogue that might uh, <coughs> uh, 
uh, loan those to us uh, for that event. Um, partner with the FBI, are you really serious? They did all they could to break up Black Lab liberation movements, the Panther Party. They've been involved in one after another of despicable attacks, particularly on African-Americans, but other people of color. I, just, I find that laughable. I mean, really sad commentary. Uh, if you're gonna have a group that goes and discusses hate crimes and you wanna bring the FBI, certainly have a community group uh, that has an opportunity to respond to that. Um, second, I wanted to tell you that I met with uh, on a Sunday with uh, council member Greg Tanaka and uh, Lumi Gardner who owns the Fushi Sushi. And we're gonna work together coming up with ideas to see how can we have consequences for standalone hate speech, okay? Uh, but not criminalize it. They may want to criminalize it, but I'm trying to say that you can't really do that. You know, if somebody wants to, as I said in the newspaper, call me a half-breed radical, half-breed Jew, I got a, I got no problems with it. I might hit them on a particular day, uh, and then I'm going to be the one probably charged. But the point is, that language alone, as offensive as it is, isn't a hate crime. I keep trying to get that across. You can talk to Jeff Rosen, who happens to be a very proud Jewish man, the district attorney of this county, who I have a difference with, as you might imagine, on, this, on Israel and Palestine. And he's going to tell you, standalone hate speech, as vile as it can be, is not a hate crime. So we've got to have more than that. If they were to grab that yarmulke off that young man's head, which I didn't hear Commissioner Krauss say, or slap him on the face, uh, done something else, then we had a hate crime. Otherwise, we just have a despicable, vile individual. Please don't partner with the FBI on this uh, unless you've asked the community about that, and particularly the Black community, who's been treated violently you. by the FBI. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, who is our next commentator? The next speaker is Mark Peterson Perez. Go ahead, please. OK. I, I just wanted to briefly mention that, you know, the hate crimes are really the, the direct result of a family unit. And I'm sure you will all agree is that the fabric of society is in fact the family unit. And so when there is a breakdown in the family unit, if both parties are not taking an active role in the rearing of their children, you're gonna have problems. So early on, as you raise your children, they need to be uh, completely informed as to how to, to react to uh, individuals that are perhaps not, or bullying as an example. But let me move on really quick. Now, I've been covering the stories of Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia, and I, and I think I, I've sent a couple of emails in that respect. Um, so what's happening in Russia is that Putin has ordered his federal arm similar to the FBI to break into their homes, beat them, throw them into jail, uh, confiscating their property, not allowing them ha to have access to their bank accounts, okay? Uh, this is a horrible hate, hate crime. In fact, Putin is liking Jehovah's Witnesses to the Taliban. That's right, you heard this correctly. They're liking Jehovah's Witnesses to the Taliban. That's outrageous. If anyone knows the history of Jehovah's Witnesses, they're a peace-loving people. They do not take up arms like Catholics against Catholics. During World War I, World War II, Catholics were killing each other, okay? And the Pope, well, he, he stood behind their their, their their ideology and their, and their philosophy concerning Catholicism, okay? He supported each Catholic, German Catholic, American Catholic, to kill each other. Now, how, how crazy is that, okay? So if you can do something about, maybe send a letter to Putin, you know, to listen, you know, uh, religious freedoms it, 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 it is embedded within their constitution. And, and that's what I don't understand. Religious freedom is embedded in, within their constitution. So say something, speak out, okay? Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Kat Snyder. Kat, go ahead, please. You have two and a half minutes. 
Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the, the slides on the hate crimes from the FBI. It was really useful information. One of the things that they talk about is needing to gain community trust. And I think that that's actually one of the more important things. If it doesn't reach to the level of, um, of a hate crime or it doesn't need to get escalated all the way to the FBI, I think we need to have systems in place so that we know that we can trust our, our fellow man. Um, and I'd like to have a little bit more um, about uh, programs that can help with that, maybe bystander intervention trainings, that kind of stuff where we can, we know what to do when we see something. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is that I just noticed some reporting in the Palo Alto Weekly about some bullying in gun that apparently didn't get solved by the administration and rose to the level of a hate crime, as far as I can tell from the reporting. And so um, that seems to me that it's not, you know, it's not just randos coming through that we need to do bystander interventions on that there's some institutional issues that are allowing bullying to continue and rise to the level of a hate crime and I don't know how the HRC can handle it but I, I just want to make sure that that is also um, on the table to maybe perhaps uh, they could some someone could look at their how they handle risk management how they handle litigation because it seems that sometimes when your your insurance is trying to uh, minimize litigation, it might not maximize civil rights and community trust. So I don't know that the HRC is the right group for this, but having people go through and, and figure out whether that is the case, whether litigation issues help this to persist might be a good route to go as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Chair, that is the last speaker. Thank you. Um, thank you for the public comment. Um, Council Member Stone, um, do you have any thoughts before we start our dialogue and discussion? Um, no, no, no thoughts to, to share at the at the moment. I'm just looking forward to following the conversation. I thought the, I, I appreciated the report and um, I thought the uh, the event that night was a was a great informative event. I'm not sure how many people uh, showed up, but for those who who did, I don't, yeah. I don't recall. But for those who did, it was I, I thought really rewarding. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things, um, and um, the council members is referring to the the city hate. Um, sorry, the city hate um, event that was done. It was very very well done. Um, so, commissioners, I, I, I would love to invite the Federal Bureau of Investigation to Palo Alto to do one of two things. Um, to meet with key community leaders, faith, business people, those that are community, and, and, and make this presentation and talk about how they can deal with hate crimes and hate incidences and aggressive first and, and a, and what, what are the lines and the threshold? Because I think until we equip community leaders, um, we, we don't get a deep level of penetration and having the FBI around and having them talk about it, I think it's really good. Um, so that, because I think having them just come to one of our meetings, we don't get the deep community um, penetration that we should get. And I think it would be great for rabbis, pastors, uh, people from the mosque, all of those different, um, all different groups to come together and hear from them and know what resources they have. Because uh, right now I'm dealing with one faith institution that has some significant challenges and they're trying to figure out how to deal with hate stuff. And so I think that's a good starting point. And the floor is open to any comments from any commissioner. Commissioner Krauss. I, I concur with you, Chair, in okay. every shape and form. And I think we should make it a broader reach and bring in our religious community leaders. And I start love. So I concur and support you. Okay. Um, 
Commissioner Savage. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. It, it sounds like a good idea. But are, are you talking about someone um, from the FBI coming to meet individually with? No. Or, okay, so it'll be an event of sorts. It would. It would. It, it would. It would be depending on what their schedule is, either in person or or um, Zoom event, where we're inviting um, local leaders, however we define that, to participate in it and get information. You know, because I think it's at the front of mind for a lot of different groups at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Evelyn? I just have one question, I guess. I did attend, the, I was looking for the name of the event that I attended where you were one of the speakers, the Community Together, the Recognizing <laughs> and Reporting Hate Crimes in the Community mm -hmm. event. And I'm just curious as to how would that be different? Like uh, having the FBI come in because I know we had district attorney, one of the district attorneys yes. from Santa Clara County mm -hmm. uh, talk about it. So I'm just curious as how, you know, what do you see? How do you see it being different and what would it add to the conversation? I see it being different. Um, I think the FBI would elicit more attention from faith. If, if, if we target it to faith leaders, community leaders, business owners, and you said the FBI is giving a presentation on hate, more people are going to show up for that. And if we said the city of Palo Alto is giving a presentation on hate. I agree. Um, I, I think it gives, it, the other part it gives is it gives an overall global perspective of what's happening in the area in general. So not just in our local community or in local county, so they can see the trends because some people don't understand where we fit as far as our, some people are like, well, maybe you're a little over concerned to where it is, but you start seeing the significant spike in hate incidents and hate crimes in Santa Clara County. And even in our area, you start saying, okay, now this is a real thing because now I'm looking at all the different counties. So I've, I haven't heard MPD and the district attorney have all done a great job, but I found this by far to be the most convincing presentation on the matter. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so I want to put a motion on the floor um, to reach out to the FBI this month. Yes, yes. This is a discussion item. This is a discussion yeah. item. So you can bring this up at agenda planning. Okay, I'll do it at, at, at the end of the meeting, and then staff can go with um, that direction at that time. Okay, thank you. All right, we are good. Okay. Um, so that's it for this item. Let's talk about the uh, upcoming Human Relations Commission retreat. Um, what we're going to, do, a few things. Um, I sat with um, Vice Chair Eberly and staff, and I have to say we've had an extremely productive year as compared to the three or four points that we set to tackle and what we've accomplished on the points. Maybe not as much in some areas, but um, I felt it was very, you know, we, we have been in front of council two or three times with recommendations this year. We'll be going back to council in January for another thing. So it felt like we had really moved the ball policy-wise. Um, we want to schedule our um, or, or retreat for after, the council's retreat for a few reasons. First of all, the council is gonna give some idea of direction, things they wanna see and do in the city. So we wanna we want to have that in the pot as we start talking about what we wanna do. Number two, what I'm gonna ask each commissioner to do um, to sort of pre-game for it is highlight three issues, start doing some resource digging, looking at, what the dimension of those issues in the community are. So when we come to the planning meeting, 
it's not like we're saying, well, this might be a good idea or this might be a good idea. We could say, well, I've done some research in these areas. I've, I've seen that this is happening. These people are the players. This is, and this is where how human relations could do it because we don't, we, I don't want us to waste a third or half of our year doing research on something that is possibly a dead end. I want when we put it on our agenda or we put it on our plan guide that we give to council, it has legs, it has feet, we can impact it. It's something that's being called for in the community instead of, you know, um, we're in too critical of a time for exploratory missions. We need to get to, we need when we do work for it to make sense. I mean, um, we we were great with hate crimes. We were great with the art commission. We're great with um, these other areas. And I think those are great examples of there was an issue, there's a research, it was done, and we were able to move the ball forward. So that is my um, overall take on it. Uh, Council Member Stone, do you have any thoughts on the, the retreat, knowing that you are a veteran of several um, human relations commission? Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, good question. No, I mean, I, I do, I, I share your, um, I share your thoughts on the on the strategy on how best to move forward and compliment the HRC on really bringing a lot to council uh, and, and a lot of really important issues to council. And I think you've been accomplishing that goal that we've been working on with the HRC for several for several years, just trying to increase the the role of the HRC in the city and and being seen as being seen as a body that council can rely on and come to for, uh, for advice purposes. So I think you're. I think you're on the right path, and I think your strategy for how to handle the retreat is the right way to go. I hate to see us lose the momentum that you've built up over the last couple of years. So um, I, I would say continue with that. We've we've done we've started a lot of good things, I think, on social justice issues, um, but it's it's really just the beginning. And so if we can kind of keep the the, the pressure on the on the city and uh, moving forward on these issues, I, I think we're in a, for a good spot. So I'm happy to share feedback on anything specific but those are just kind of my general thoughts for now council member um stone do you know the date of the the council retreat in january yet i was trying to look it up no we're being okay. pulled right now on it um i can pull up the three possible dates if that would if that would help but we have i, I think i'll just i'll i'll wait for the the clerk's office then and then we'll plan the hrc's retreat accordingly but i just wanted to see if you knew no not, not yet thank you oh, all right um we have community comment Okay, we have um, two commenters. The first one is Aram James. Aram, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I've attended many city council retreats, not as many HRC retreats. I always find them valuable and I try to put input into issues that I think are gonna be critical. Uh, obviously, hate crimes is a big one. I'd like to have, if you're gonna insist on bringing the FBI into the city, somebody do a history on uh, their hate crimes uh, and their history of hate crimes against uh, liberation groups, all, anybody that really is a dissenter in America, the history of that. Because, um, you know, if you don't, get, it's, it's like uh, talking about having a great canine unit without talking about the history of the vileness of canine units and what they've done in this country. So if you really want to have credibility, you got to give a full picture of the FBI. If you don't, I'm sure I'll be there to, to you know, add my comments. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want you to think I've uh, you know left the city or something. Um, I, I I do also think the recruiting issue uh, is a big one. I sent you got uh, everybody on the HRC a long memo on the issue. I think there's a way that we can make a difference uh, if we stand together and speak out about the zero police office African American officers. Why is that important? You know when I was doing jury selection over the years. You know, you always individually voir dire everybody because no no group should be stereotyped as being pro defense or pro prosecution. But the truth of the matter is, as a general rule, African Americans are going to be your best jurors. They're also going to be your best police officers. They're going to have the most compassion. They're going to look into things, and oftentimes they get their spirits crushed by the white officers 
in the unions, and they're the victims of hate crimes. So there's a lot that goes on in this issue, but you know, so the recruiting issue is a very vital one. Uh, I'm hoping to do some work on that matter and get it uh, hopefully to the police department. Uh, it's, it's just so critical that you have that issue on the agenda, recruiting officers, black officers, female black officers in the department and getting somebody, uh, as I said in my memo, maybe to be the next chief, um, reach out to Noble the National Organization on Black Law Enforcement Executives. Uh, reach out to former police chief uh, Ron Davis, who was uh, uh, later Obama's ma man on the 21st century, policing, cutting edge policing, and now is the, and I'll end my comments, is now the um, oversees the, the marshal service so for, for, the, this, for, the, for the, the, the government. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James. Mark Peterson Perez, you have um, two and a half minutes. Go ahead, please. Well, this is probably going to be uh, my last video conference with the city of Palo Alto. I'm just so engaged with so many other things and activities that are taking place in, in, this, in the country of Nicaragua. I wish the HRC, now I can't tell you how many emails I have sent over the years concerning Nicaragua and I, and no one has given any attention to uh, <clears throat> what's happening currently in this country. Um, I, 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 I now Daryl Savage doesn't believe this, but I consider myself. A Excuse me, sir, sir, sir. Uh -huh. um, we don't take public comments to specifically um, reference any commissioner. Well, I don't quite understand why that would be the case, but I, I, I'll adhere to your protocol. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but I would like to, you know, to to mention too that you know the Constitution, the First Amendment, covers such issues as what you are prohibiting me from uh, taking part in. Okay, there are, there are so many legal precedences that hit upon this. So essentially, what you're doing is you're suppressing my speech, and I, I have a problem with that, but. I'm respectful of you, and, and so I'll just go ahead and I'll uh, I'll adhere to your protocol, but I will protest vehemently on any First Amendment issue to which obviously uh, the HRC has no experience in and or any history in. Having said that, at your retreat, if you can possibly talk about maybe restoring public comments to a full five minutes, uh, again, over the years, what I have seen demonstrated is that individuals within the HRC panel are reducing public comment time. So I'd like you to perhaps as a suggestion, of course, just you know, merely a suggestion, revisit the uh, public comment time and bring that back uh, to a full five minutes. Or for that matter, maybe you can mirror uh, city council meetings, because I think with city council meetings, you get a three full minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think it was at one time five minutes. So obviously, you know, you can take a look at your own personal agenda and schedule and make time for a full five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, you can take it off. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do we have any comments on the um, on the, um, the retreat, please? No thoughts, feedback, ideas. I will just add something, Chair. So when we get some ideas of dates, um, staff will. Um, poll the HRC. Um, this is um, most often done a night or a, a, a weekend day, although sometimes it's it's been on a, a weekday depending on it, but um, there will be a variety of days and times that the HRC is given to choose from. For new members, this is usually approximately like a, a four, at least a four hour meeting, four to five hour meeting. It's generally a Saturday morning. All right. That is correct. Um, and the meeting is open to public for public comment. All right. Um, I'll move on to our next item. Um, 
I would like Vice Chair Everly to give a report update on the Public Artwork Commission for the King Art Residency. Thank you. So I've had the pleasure of being one of the participants on the selection panel for the Scott King Residency. And we had we selected someone. He's an artist from San Jose and his name is Reyos Magos. And then it went to the Palo Alto Arts Commission and they approved it unanimously. So he is going to be the first Scott King residency artist. Um, his plan, his proposed project for us was a photo booth. So this is a concept, it can change. I spoke to Elise DeMarco and she's like, make sure that they understand that it's a, you know, that it may change. But his plan that he presented was to create a photo booth and place it somewhere like a library where anybody has access to it. And he's going to invite community members to come into the photo booth and there's gonna be a list of questions and people will answer these questions. They'll be able to stop at any time and this will be anonymous. And these questions are gonna be regarding identity, culture, belonging, community, how people felt during this, you know, the pandemic, grief, loss. And then afterwards, there's gonna be, people have the chance to transition into actually taking photographs. And again, there will be filters and people will be, it'll still remain anonymous. So he will have that photo booth and then collect all the data and then do something with it. He's also planning on moving the photo booth around town. So every, you know, more people have access. Um, in. So his goals for this project, and I'll read what he wrote. Um, it's storytelling as a form of mental health, wellness and healing. He does have a background um, in psychology. Goal number two is to celebrate diversity through imagery. Goal number three is social connection, belonging in Palo Alto, which was the main theme for this residency. And goal number four is to celebrate essential workers. Um, I know that the city of Palo Alto is working on his contract right now. So hopefully he'll start working soon. And I did send, uh, Mary, can you put up the photos? I got a sample of his work so you guys could see. So this is from an exhibit that he had in Mexico. You can go to the next slide. This was in San Jose, he made um, altars. And he also has a lot of illustrations really nice. So everybody, thank you, Mary, you can take it. <laughs> thank you. Um, everybody was really excited about him. I think he's a really great artist. And we're hoping that the residency is a success. And whatever he comes up with the end product will be, you know, in front of City Hall. It might be a banner on the building, or, a, you know, some 3D sculpture project in front of it. Does anybody have any questions? No, um, I don't. Commissioner Krause, do you have a question? I don't, I just want to applaud you. This, start, this sounds like a more community opportunity. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Um, just so everybody has a little bit of background, we actually met with yeah. the public art committee last it was it March or April to discuss the beginning of this project and have commissioners participate in this so this was a joint effort between the HRC and the art commission and that's why we wanted to report because sometimes you start meetings and you hear about things and you wonder what happened and like this is the end result of it we now are open for public comment
Okay, the first speaker is Mark Peters from Perez. Um, go ahead, please. I love the idea about public art. Um, I think a booth uh, should be included with Bob Wire like a prison cell uh, with a Palo Alto logo inside with an individual whose uh, First Amendment rights are being violated like they were violated tonight. Uh, I think each and every one of you should really take a look at the <laughs> a legal precedent case uh, that is talked about in every legal university, not only in this country, but globally, and that's uh, uh, Sullivan versus New York Times. Uh, my God, you guys, you're, you have violated my First Amendment rights. And I, I, it's gonna give me an excellent opportunity to write about this subject here. And I'm gonna hit all of the news media here in Nicaragua that this is exactly what you've done. The Human Relations Commission has blocked my First Amendment rights. I just can't believe it. It's unbelievable. And you sit there muted. Maybe that's just a um, rhetorical question, rhetorical question, because you can't answer. But it is given your, you do have the First Amendment right to speak out. <laughs> it's interesting how you, you know, you, you look at the First Amendment and you, no one adheres to it. It, it. It's really quite tragic. One, on a final note, look up Jehovah's Witnesses and all of the First Amendment legal battles that they put in place for you, for you, so that you can express your religious feelings, your thoughts, your convictions, and your ideas. It was Jehovah's Witnesses that set an untold number of First, of First Amendment legal precedences. That's right, Jehovah's Witnesses. They paved the way for you. And what have you done? You have sequestered, you have denied me my First Amendment right. Thank you. The next speaker is Aram James. Aram, go, hold on. Aram, go ahead, please. So, you know, I want to uh, really commend uh, Counselor, uh, Attorney at Law and uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Everly, is it, did I get that right, I hope, uh, for the artwork uh, that you're going to bring to the city of Palo Alto. That's extraordinary. Uh, you know, as trial lawyers, sometimes we're really uh, uh, performance artists when we're at our best, at least when I was at my best. Uh, so, you know, I think that inherent in the intersection between law and art, it's critical. The core principle, of course, of the First Amendment is the right to vehemently criticize public officials. Uh, the city of Palo Alto knows a lot about that because the police were called on me back in 2005 by the mayor at that time, uh, very nice gentleman, uh, rest in peace. And uh, the police were called in and of course it became a huge scandal that this little uh, five foot eight Jewish guy standing behind the podium criticizing the police, the city manager and everybody else, the police were brought in. And of course, Ladoris Cordell was on the council at that time. They all huddled around the mayor and said, uh, you know, they were whispering that uh, maybe you should let Mr. James have his full time, let him finish his speech. And Dave Price and the press were all over the mayor for that exact thing, saying that you could not individually criticize. Now, our former president, Trump, guess what? He wanted to see that 9-0 decision, New York Times versus Sullivan, written by Justice Brennan, beautiful decision, reversed, because he did not want to be the subject of, of uh, criticism, as you know. So, you know, Pastor Smith, I have a tremendous amount of respect for what you do and everything that you do, but Mr. Peterson Perez is absolutely correct. Core principle of the First Amendment is the right to vehemently criticize public officials. Look at the pastors right now coming out, wonderful group in opposition to the craziness and embarrassment to be a defense attorney today, when the defense attorney in the Arbery case, uh, Arbery case uh, 
says we're not going to have any black pastors expressing their First Amendment right by sitting peacefully in the courtroom. That idiot of a defense attorney violated all of the pastors, black pastors that wanted to sit in that courtroom. What a despicable display uh, in the defense of those three white gentlemen. I, I use that term lightly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are no um, more hands, Chair. Thank you. I'd like to move on to our final item of the evening. Um, I want to do a straw poll about the comfort of meeting in person. Um, I also want to talk about our start time. Do we want to keep it at six or move it back to seven? Um, but I think, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've never seen a more distinct vote that way. Um, commissioners, um, and this is a straw poll. No matter of fact, we're not gonna do this this way. I'll have staff poll you, you know, so because I don't want anybody um, to, I want everybody's decision to be their own and not public. Um, let staff know your comfort level with meeting in person. That will help us plan moving forward and also how we deal with what council gives to us moving forward. Whether we have to have people in so yes, yes. The, the concern I have with that chair is that there was um, a vote of the HRC to meet at six o'clock. And at that point, they it was indicated that it would be revisited. So it would be a vote of the HRC to move um, past um, back to um, seven o'clock or another start time. So you don't have to make that decision tonight, but it would need to be a, a public conversation. Yes, and, and, and the question becomes this. Um, I think it's very easy to do six um, when you're at home and you don't have to go anywhere, but I think it becomes a lot more difficult with, with the time between work and, and driving someplace to have something start at six. It's sometimes a challenge. So um, I, I need us to respond to staff about comfort level of in-person moving forward. Um, also, we've had a very vigorous year. Um, we've done a lot of good work. Um, and I wanted to do this is um, we're going to hold off meetings in the month of December and come back full force in January. So um, we'll do public comment and then we'll come back and have a discussion about this. Staff? Okay, I'll just wait till the clock is up. Thank you, Mary. Um, Aram, go ahead, you have two and a half minutes. Thank you very much. You know, I seemed like the, the rollback to six was a quickly made decision, but I think for working people, uh, it would be a lot, you know, I know I'm re reiterating some of the chair's comments, easier for people to get to the council meeting at seven or commissioners to the HRC meetings. Um, and I certainly hope uh, that you keep a Zoom component to the meetings because uh, it's a little harder for me to get to meetings these days. And so I, you know, I, I really want to participate in my community. And I think that having, uh, continuing on Zoom as well and work coming in person makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, really that that's my comments. I think if you look at the city council meetings, they have a, a, a sort of a split comfort level. Some of the council members still appear by way of Zoom and some are there in person. I've seen more council members recently, but I think at least one maybe still uh, comes from home. I, I'm sure uh, Councilmember uh, Stone can enlighten us uh, on the, the details of that. But I think that's important to um, keep consider having the meetings at seven instead of six, and then keeping the, uh, the Zoom meeting open as a possibility for the citizens as well as coming in person. Thank you. Thank you much, um, commissioners. Um, I don't think there's a chair. I, yes, we have one more speaker. 
So if Mary, you could get the clock back up, please. Okay, we have Mark Peterson Perez. Go ahead. You have two and a half minutes. Was that a uh, sigh of disgust when you heard my name being mentioned as a final speaker? Uh, I think the expression on your face says it all. Let me, t let me say this about that, Richard Nixon, okay? I wanna tell you this. I'm no attorney, but I've had so many people in my family tell me, Mark, why don't you just go take the exam? Uh, perhaps I will do so. But I'll tell you this. I'm not an attorney, but to my credit, I have two petitions that were filed before the California Supreme Court. And when I took those petitions up there and I presented those documents to the, to the clerk there in San Francisco, she looked at those documents in amazement. And she said, Mr. Peterson Perez, I have never accepted a petition like your petition in all of my years serving here at the Supreme Court and clerking for that organization. Huh. How do you think that made me feel? Awesome. The only person ever to receive two petitions before the California Supreme Court, yours truly. One of those petitions I filed was against city attorney Gary Bond. He violated my constitutional rights, my First Amendment. In fact, he called my employers and had me fired. HRC was very much aware of what was going on and said nothing. You were muted. What does that tell you about your organization? Shameful and disgusting. You should all just simply resign. And the attorney that serves on your committee, my God, why didn't she just reach her hand up and choke you for violating my First Amendment rights? She's a defense attorney, my God. Incredible. So well said. I don't know how you live with yourselves. I really don't. Signing off here, you, you, you disgust me, all of you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you so much, um, Mr. Peterson Perez. Um, whenever you write the brief on me, please include the part where you violated my First Amendment right by allowing my face, by criticizing my face and your expression. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> crazy. All right. Um, we need to do a vote on December's meeting. And then. Uh, I need you just to respond to staff and think about the six o'clock start time and we'll bring it up at January's meeting for a vote. Can I have a, a motion on December's meeting? Um, I move that we do not meet in December. I have a second. I'll second it. Okay. I'll start at the top of the alphabet. Vice Chair Everly. Aye. Commissioner Krauss. Nay. Mr. Savage. Aye. Chair Smith, aye. All right, thank you much. All right. Um, we are on to commissioner reports. Is that correct? That is correct, Chair. All right, do we have any commissioner reports from this month? I do not have anything additional. All right. Um, we, we've been working with staff. Um, we have been placed on the um, council calendar for what's the date? Uh, January 24th, Chair. January 24th. Um, and we will be going to, to council to discuss the 100 conversations. And that is part of the whole. Um, equity, diversity and equity package that's going to council, is that correct, and policy and services? That is correct. So we will be presenting to council on that work and, and asking them to continue to look how we can impact that work at that time. So that, so if you save that date, that will be the 24th of this month. 
um, flight 24th of January. I'm sorry, not this one. 24th would be Thanksgiving, right? All right. Um, I also add, I've also had several individuals from the community um, reach out to me. Um, one being a pastor who has had a second um, hate-based incident at her home. Um, so that continues to be very disturbing, along with um, one of the parents from Gunn. Um, so we are at a critical point in time in our city where um, we're dealing with some challenges around hate, hate incidences or, or that are brushing into hate crime or freedom of speech that's brushing into hate incidences. So at this point in time, um, we need to be vigilant and be listening to our communities to hear what we're hearing and hearing from people. Um, so that is my commissioner report for this month. All right, um, council. Thank you, Chair Smith. Uh, well, I wanna thank uh, the commission for the work you did on the renter protection uh, recommendations. That issue continues to uh, be debated at, at council. We've, we've taken public comment. Last week, we began the conversation, but then had to continue it again. Uh, but it should be coming back to, to council shortly for further discussion and, and hopefully a vote. Uh, so I just want to thank the commission for your work on that and to uh, continue to stay engaged and, and monitor and monitor uh, that that discussion. So that should be coming up uh, pretty shortly. And then so that's really my only report, but I just do want to say, especially with Thanksgiving a, a week from today, I think it's really easy for um, electeds and appointeds, uh, especially being on a, on a commission, to feel un unappreciated in the work that you do. You put yourself out there as, as public officials, and we have to just kind of listen to the public, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. Um, but I, I appreciate the professionalism that you all show and, and the work that you do, the thankless work too, too often that you do every, every week and, and every month. And so I know, the, I know the city appreciates it. I appreciate it. I'm very thankful for your service and uh, hope you all have a wonderful holiday season to be able to relax and, and recharge. And I'll see you all in, in January and we'll continue the good work that, we, that we're all trying to do on behalf of the city and this community. So just wanna say thank you. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Stone. And we appreciate the fact that you are an active council liaison. We really do appreciate it. Um, staff? Yes, thank you. Uh, the chair and the council member took two of my items. So I only have one item. And Mary, I'm going to ask you to come on the screen. There she is. So for those of you that um, don't know, um, today is, let me just skip back because I want to do this right. Today is Mary's last meeting with the Human mm -hmm. Relations Commission. She is retiring from the city at the end of December with a close to 35 year dedication to this community. She started in the planning department and then she went over to recreation. I've been with the city for almost 25 years and I've had the pleasure of working with Mary this whole time at the Lucy Stern Center. She was the lead customer service person and she was our lead um, facility manager planner. If you over uh, what Mary, 15 or more year period, <laughs> you had an event at the Lucy <laughs> Stern Center, weddings, bar mitzvahs, retirement parties, memorial services. Mary was the person working with these families to help them plan these events, realize the importance that they placed, these events placed in Mary's life and did an amazing, an amazing job. It was my pleasure when I moved over to human services that a couple of years later, Mary came and has been my partner in human services for over five years. You know, she is doing <clears throat> Excuse me. She's the, you know, my co liaison to the HRC, making sure the agendas are all great. 
helping plan all the events that we used to have pre-COVID. If you ever went and saw how nice every event looked, especially the food, it was all merry. <clears throat> so she is our financial person for human services. She helps me manage the contract. She does all the payments and I will really be at a loss when she retires at the end of this year. So um, I, I wanted to laud Mary because she deserves it after her years of faithful service as my colleague, as my friend. And um, thank you, Mary, very oh, much. Thank you. I've, been, I've enjoyed working with the HRC. I'll miss everybody. Sorry, I get really emotional. Um, but yeah. It's hard to, you know, not knowing that I won't be coming to work after 35 years, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like for um, starting with council member Stone and then we'll work our way through the commissioners to um, give their um, kind comments. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Chair Smith. And oh, I am so sad to be losing you, Mary, uh, but so glad that you're moving on to uh, a better, hopefully, uh, you know, a newer, better chapter uh, and you'll be able to enjoy. I know your your husband was is a retired fire, uh, fire, fire, firefighter, right? So yeah. I know you'll be able to have uh, good times to, together and your, and your, and your family. Uh, yeah, Mary was served in this role when I was on the HRC. And I just remember from the, from your very first day, your kindness just lit up the room. Everyone oh, felt comfortable you. to be able to go to you. You were always just a constant professional and really represented the city and the HRC so well. So I am so happy for you. And I'm also so sad that you're, that you're <laughs> leaving, um, but good luck with, with everything. You, you've really been uh, a true joy to, to work with. Thank you. Thank you, Greer. Commissioner Savage. Um, yeah, well, it was a delight to work with you. Um, you know, you, you've always been cheerful and you have a remarkable way of combining professionalism with kindness. And oh, that's thank you. Very great to have. So it was great. I, I hope we'll still see you at some point, but um, but good luck. And you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have a great life ahead of you now. That oh, you're... thank you. Um, Commissioner Krause. Um, all right. I've just started to get to know you and everything I've seen has been extraordinary. Oh, thank you. We'll miss you. And yes, there is such kindness. But set that Apple Watch up that we talked about <laughs> before we really got here. Let it become a tool for you as you grow and change and enjoy your retirement, stay healthy, stay safe, stay strong. Thank you. I will miss you. Thanks. I'll miss everybody too. Thank you, Commissioner Eberle. I'm so bummed. I, like <laughs> Commissioner Krauss, we only got to start, we just started to get to know you. I'm bummed it was only six months, but I feel honored I got to have you help me with the photos then. <laughs> You've always been a delight and super responsive and a joy to work with. Um, so we're gonna miss you, but it sounds like you've given a lot, a lot to the city. It mm -hmm. Sounds like an amazing career, and I'm sure you're looking forward to retirement. And it's gonna treat you well, and it's gonna open up all new doors. And you can always volunteer back with the city. Yeah, I'm going to do uh, volunteering. Yeah, so it'll be great to see you again. And best of luck and best wishes and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Mary, um, I remember for the first event I did with the HRC, I actually wasn't on the, on the um, HRC at the time. I just did the event. And I showed up early and you were setting up and I was like, yeah, she's really efficient. She does this great. And over the last five years, I've watched you set up, work in the background, never ask for attention. And it's a blessing to have somebody that does all the nuts and bolts and details and does them well. 
So I know Minka is, is, is fretting on the inside. She hasn't said it yet. She sat on the outside, but she's fretting on the inside uh, because you were such a great partner and HRC is going to lose a great partner too. So we're grateful for your years of service. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Okay. It was very nice. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, final item of the evening is the um, tentative agenda. Um, at this point, we have to do election of a chair. Um, we also have to do um, our meeting. I would look I will, uh, Commissioner Krause, maybe um, you and um, Commissioner Regeer, will you guys be ready to do any reporting out on housing at the January meeting? Um, I hope so. I hope so. The parking is moving forward. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll have something to say okay. at that point. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll tentatively put it on there. We'll have staff ping, um, ping you guys at that point in time. Um, so, yes, yes, Minka. So we have a, um, a proclamation of thanks to former Vice Chair Stinger. And um, we, um, we would like to wait to do that till we're in person. So if we're in person in January, then um, we will do it then. If it's not till February, then we will wait um, to, to do it then. So um, thank you, Commissioner Savage, for giving me the little tickle in my ear uh, about that. So the mayor has signed the proclamation and we will just wait to see till we're back in person. And our, sorry, our meeting will, will be before the retreat for sure our next meeting, the January meeting? No, our retreat will be in February, beginning of February. Oh, February, okay. okay. Thank because, you. Because staff generally, sorry, council generally meets sometime in the middle to second half of January. Um, because they, do they meet before or after this, the, the mayor, they pick a mayor and then they, um, then does he give his priorities and then you have the retreat or do you have the retreat and then he gets the priorities? I think council member Stone is like, I don't know. This is my first one too. Um, I'd have to look back to, to be to be honest. Um, sorry for me being so colloquial, but I was just trying to think back myself and I can't exactly say if it, which came first. I believe it's the new mayor that leads the, the retreat, but. Um, well, that is, I mean, that's for sure because we, we picked the new mayor at the first meeting of January. Okay. And then the order where I'm not certain, but what I think is, because I'm not sure if you were referring to the mayor's state of the union, sorry, the this state of the city address. State, state of the city. I believe that comes after our retreat. Oh, that's a, that's good. I'm glad. At least there's some synchronization there. <laughs> but, I'm not, but I'm not certain on that one, but I'm pretty sure it's the case. All right. Um, so I'm grateful. Um, and I'm pretty sure we will have more items to deal with. Um, as the time goes in December. If you have anything you'd like to see on the agenda, um, as long as you get it to us two weeks before the meeting, we'll be glad to put it on. So, um, and then we'll go from there. And what was the FBI? When were, when were, when were we supposed to talk about that? That's up to you, Chair, to, to give um, me direction to say if you if you think um, January is a good date or February is a good date. Um, to bring that for what? For us to make it right. an agenda if you're looking, item? If you're looking for an item and also um, for staff or others to do outreach to invite um, business and faith leaders to the HRC meeting, is it, is it I, my thinking is it's an HRC meeting or are you talking about something separate? Separate event. Okay, then I would suggest it would have to be February because if we're looking at um, or, or late January, because my 
experiences is you can't even start talking to people to attend until you're early in the, the new year. Okay, so let's do this. Um, so, we'll make it. Let's do this. Um, I'll ask staff to do some tentative research um, and find out what the capacity timing would be on the FBI side to possibly do anything so that in January we can vote and say these are our options. Does that make sense? Minka, are you frozen? I think Minka's frozen. There you go, you're back. Are oh, you muted? It's one of those things that you say, is it me or is it them? So I realized it was me. So the direction is for this to be a separate event. I think it would be helpful to have um, the chair or the, um, at least one to two people that can um, just work with staff to get some direction if um, to, to plan this uh, event um, and if we're looking for later in January or February. Um, we'll probably look, I know um, January is never good for anybody. Okay. Um, let's, let's say event in February and I will take any volunteers to help me plan the event. Do I have a volunteer? Volunteer? Yes. Is that, okay. we have, so it'll be the chair and commissioner Krause working with staff. Thank you. All right. Thank you so, so much. Um, is there any other items, questions, concerns, issues, or problems? Could I uh, speak for a minute? You're free to speak, Commissioner. Okay. The reason I was urging us to have a meeting in December is because I think certain things are coming to a head in this country. And I don't think the recent um, trials are going to go very uh, well. Yes. I'm trying to find. And I think we may not, we have a Delta surge, but I, I fear that we have people in the street about the outcomes. Now more than any time, we should stand at attention and bear witness. This is what I will say. I am willing to, if push come to shove, call a special meeting in December. Okay. Um, so commissioners, if we have um, some significant yeah. social upheaval or challenges, um, I'll ask staff to ping everybody and see if we could put together a meeting. Thank you. Uh, and, and Commissioner Krause, thank you for your, your um, clarity and prescience to actually see that this might be a thing coming up. Um, that was very, very, um, it's just great clarity. Um, so. Thank yeah. you. All right, so. I wanna wish everybody a, um, a happy Thanksgiving. I pray wh whoever your community is, fam whoever you consider family, whoever you, your loved ones are, you are spending time and you're thankful that you've made it another year even if it's ups yeah. and downs and different challenges. Um, I encourage you to unplug, disconnect, enjoy the people around. Have a great Thanksgiving and look to your emails because there might be some stuff coming. All right. And Mary, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, thank have you. A, have a great Happy evening. Thanksgiving. Bye -bye. Happy holiday. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Mary. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>